Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video and you can tell I am beaming because Chelsea have won a game. We won 1-0 against Brighton in the Carabao Cup, the EFL Cup, whatever you want to call it. Let's switch over to the other camera and take a look at the sofa score page for this game. Overall, I'm just going to give you my quick thoughts before we get into it. I am over the moon. This is a game that, like I said in my preview, I went into expecting to lose, maybe getting through with a draw and penalties. I said if we were going to win, it would be tight. It would be by like one goal, which it was in the end, although not fairly because we did score a goal. Nicholas Jackson should have had a brace today. He did have a brace on his right hand, but he should have had a brace in terms of two goals because his one that was ruled out offside, he looked like quite decently onside. So... I do think the officials had a bit of a stinger, but let's break this game down. We'll go over the players first, and then we'll break down a little bit of what happened. So Robert Sanchez, ironically, has been a little bit of a saviour for Chelsea in recent games, and today he was probably one of our worst players, because he did make one or two good saves, but then there was other times that he, I mean, he literally gave them the ball, like, in the middle of the box more or less like he had a couple absolute howlers with his distribution so very poor from him but then other great moments Mark Kukurea you could make a case that that was his best game in a Chelsea shirt there was a few mistakes here and there if I click his name you'll see some of the stats beneath one inception nine tackles he was only dribble pass once he won th 11 of his 13 ground duels two of his three aerial duels you can see some really brilliant performances here long balls four successful out of five attempts it was just an overall amazing game for him and maybe him at right back is something we need to see more often i don't know or maybe it was just you know he hasn't been in the team and this was a fired up performance for him but if he could do this consistently i mean he'd be in the team every week if he plays like that because this was a fantastic performance from him de Sassi only got a 6.9 rating i actually think he was pretty decent overall Levi Cowell again, also decent, nothing crazy outstanding, a few of his nice sort of splitting um, long balls where he plays it across the ground really powerfully up towards the strikers, a few of them that were really, really nice. Chilwell, bit of a quiet game, probably not his best one, um, but kept a clean sheet and all. I do think it was weird because he went off with an injury, obviously, late on in the game. If we take a look, well, it doesn't even count actually because it wasn't a substitution. We were out of substitutions and there were seven minutes added on. So it must have been a good like five or so minutes that we were playing down to ten men. Um, but he looked very capable. He was walking off fine. So I guess we'll find out if he is injured or if it was just a really safe precaution but very strange i thought if he was so comfortable walking off and looking fine why would you not just stay on the pitch because having us down to 10 men was a little worrisome ugo chukwu only getting a 6.8 i think is criminal i thought he was one of our best players and maybe having these two players sitting deep you know they were literally just covering in front of the defense maybe this is something we need to consider going forward his passing stats were pretty good. Um, ground was one three out of six. Um, where were his interceptions? I feel like he had a decent amount. Yeah, three inter uh, three tackles, one interception, one block shot, one clearance. Um, overall, I think he had a really solid game, and I'm enjoying seeing him in the Chelsea first team. Caicedo had some brilliant passing. His passing actually was 91%, so really strong there. Um, overall, some good stats for his ground jewels one and all that sort of stuff. Good interceptions, so very very happy with him. Cole Palmer with a great assist for the Nicholas Jackson goal. I think Ian Matson only getting a a 6.9 is criminal again. Like I think he should be playing most weeks because the fact we haven't even really seen him in the Premier League season, of course, in preseason we did, is criminal because he was so so good at times. Mudrick again creating chances on that left wing. But just oftentimes, no one on the end of it. You can see he had four crosses, zero accurate, no one on the end of them. One shot on target. His dribbling was a little bit off. He looked a little indecisive on which ways he was going to go. But defensively, look, seven of his ground duels, one out of 12. Aerial duels, even doing a good job there. Two tackles, one clearance, doing a very good job. And Nicholas Jackson managing to get one goal should have been two he was really unfortunate that that one got chalked off and both of them were really nice finishes you know part of me is really chuffed that they weren't it wasn't like a wonder goal that he struck from distance they were just in the box nice clinical finishes and that's what we need to see more from him and he looked 
thrilled to be walking around that pitch, getting a standing ovation from the crowd as he went off in the 87th minute. And he powered on, you know, he hurt his wrist and he was still eager to get in there, try and bully these defenders. And overall was fantastic. I think Poch got this lineup really, really good because it was just a flat back four. Obviously, Kukurea playing a little bit out of position on this side. And then the two defensive mids just sitting in front of them, giving them good cover. And then it allowed us to have this unit of four sort of pushing on the attack all the time. And it worked a treat against this Brighton team. And we know this Brighton team is no pushover, right? This is a strong um, lineup from Brighton. It wasn't like they put their the second string team out so very happy with it if we take a look at the match stats down here you'll see we didn't have a crazy amount of the ball in the first half only 39 percent of possession in the second half um actually i think that, that's just overall but the shots is what i wanted to point out in the first half we had five shots in the second half four and brighton had nine so you can see we definitely sat off once we sort of got into the lead um which is maybe something you know if we'd had that second goal would have felt a little bit more comfortable um but we didn't i think the the officials had a really bad match today i was very disappointed they just were calling so many things wrong so many fouls from brighton you can see 16 fouls for brighton here and how many yellow cards did they end up with i think it was just these two players estupinian and uh, baleba who managed to pick up yellow cards it was crazy um how they seem to be getting away with it um one thing i did want to know is that ugo chukwu if there was var and they could intervene on yellow card challenges he may well have been may, may well have been sent off because he was on a yellow and he did do a pretty poor tackle i think it was in the first half so he was a little bit lucky to be still on the pitch but considering we had a goal chalked off that was rightfully you know onside i think that is more than fair and yeah stats looking good from today um looking ahead you know we finally got a good win it's not in the league of course but i'll take a win against brighton who were on fantastic form coming into this game the league's top goal scorers i believe on like 18 goals already this season and we managed to keep them quiet you know bar any chances we were basically giving them with robert sanchez they didn't really have any major opportunities. So, I mean, the defence looked really strong. We should have had two. We managed to score one at least. And I'm happy with that. Looking ahead, we've got a game against Fulham in the league. And then Burnley not long after. Two away games, of course. The Fulham game still in London, though. Um, so it'll be exciting to see how we push on from this now. Is this Chelsea team capable now of taking this result it was a huge morale lift, like you saw with Nicholas Jackson score. The whole crowd in that stadium lifted, and it, their songs were going, everyone was singing and chanting. It seemed like there was a weight lifted off the entire club. So I'm hoping this can now be, of course, Nicholas Jackson suspended for that game, but this can, you know, lift a bit of weight off all the players, saying, okay, like, look, we can score goals. We look very good today. Cole Palmer shining you know he was a fantastic addition into the side today so i think it's probably wise that he gets some game time in that next game you know when you think he probably would have to play on the wing instead of like if we were going for a similar lineup to this say of course mark kukurea was out and reese james or malagusto's in on a normal occasion if i really do think having these two defensive mids gave us so much solidity in the back that it just freed us up going forward so i think having these two here You'd probably push Cole Palmer out on the wing and then have Enzo Fernandez in um, the middle of the pitch next to them. I think that is maybe the lineup that we need to be looking at. I think Poch needs to learn from this that, you know, this is a sort of structure that we need because it looked really good. We pretty much kept Brighton quiet and they are a, a dangerous team on their day. So very, very happy overall. I'm eager to see what you guys think of this one. If you enjoyed this one, which I'm sure you did, hit a like on the video. Let me know in the comments down below. Hit subscribe and you'll never miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.